Well, welcome to the third video about the Hospitality Initiative. Uh, I'm Ben, this is Brian. We're glad you uh, joined us for this third video. And we haven't lost people, hopefully, after <laughs> videos one and two. Hopefully people are okay watching a third video of you and I talking. Yeah, hopefully at least they know what to expect, so they're not disappointed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Low bar. That's it. Low bar. <laughs> so, well, great. Well, we're here to talk about the Hospitality Initiative. Do you want to give a review just in case someone or is in a care group and hadn't heard some of the other videos? Sure, yeah. I think we're simply just asking people to open their homes to people who may not know Jesus for the purpose of loving them and ultimately sharing the gospel with them. Yeah. And we, we want this video, the purpose of this third one is to kind of launch people into it. Um, if, if people have been uh, watching these in April, and maybe this last one might be late April or May, is there, if they're watching with their care group, um, May is the month that we're hoping people would kind of take that step of faith and have someone uh, in their home. Um, but also to make a plan for future. We don't just want it to be a, a one-time thing, but a part of a, a cultivating culture of our church. Um, before we get into the kind of some of the, the words of encouragement you wanted to share, um, before we hit record on this video, you mentioned something about clarifying something with people about uh, when the people come into our homes, do we have to, are we unsuccessful if we don't fully share the full gospel with them? Do you want to mention that before we yeah. get going? Yeah, I think it's important that we don't feel the pressure of having to get out a gospel presentation every time we have somebody in the home. Yeah, I think our, our goal is to genuinely love people, get into their lives, let them into our lives. And as that happens, naturally, our love for Christ comes out in, in the way we interact with our, mm -hmm. our family and mm -hmm. with their family. And as we get to know them better, we can understand better how the gospel connects to where they're at in their life. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's not a first time over, let me get the gospel out because that's what I'm here to do. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's The focus is on loving them, and we do want to proclaim the gospel any chance we get, but we don't yeah. want to force that or make it um, just that awkward thing that happens as they're walking out the door. Yeah, yeah sure. Oh, by the way, by the way. <laughs> I forgot to add something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, let me say a phrase that to clarify what you're, maybe what you're not saying. Um, you've heard the phrase, um, share the gospel with people and if necessary, use words. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's not what I'm saying. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> so yeah, so <laughs> you, you can't share the gospel without using your words to explain the gospel. Just being nice and loving and serving the best lasagna somebody's had doesn't bring somebody to know Christ <laughs> as their savior. Um, so uh, to evangelize, to share the gospel, to bring somebody along to, to Christ and introduce them to Christ, it takes words. Mm -hmm. And we have to be mm -hmm. able to proclaim the gospel with our mouths yeah. while we're also living it out with our lives. Yeah, and ultimately it, it's going to require faith. Mm -hmm. It's gonna say, Lord, um, uh, this is going to be difficult, but let me trust you now and, and to try to, to go there. Um, so we want to do share kind of some practical steps here in a little bit about how to um, maybe make some of those transitions and conversations from, hey, how about those Cubs or for you, Cardinals for me, uh, <laughs> to talking about spiritual things. Um, but you have some kind of encouragements that you wanted to share uh, before we do that. So why don't you go, go, go for it on that? Yeah, yeah. I think the first thing we want to keep in mind is that this is really God at work. First, He's at work in us and our hearts, and yeah. as the gospel is being pressed into every uh, nook and cranny of our hearts, that He's changing us, and as He's changing us, He's He's using us. Um, so, as we share the gospel with people, it's not us who've got to persuade and win all the arguments. It's not a intellectual battle between us and them. It's mm. Um, and it's not something we want to coerce people into doing either. It's, it's God who's at work in us, and it's God who's at work in, in them as well. And, yeah. and we want to trust in that and trust God that he's at work um, in, in that as we're doing this hospitality initiative. Uh, the second is, um, you know, John 17 talks about being um, in the world but not of the world. And I think sometimes as believers we could... Um, kind of try to be isolating ourselves from the rest of the world so we don't get stained or don't get dirty. Um, and I, I don't think that's what Christ is uh, praying for his disciples as he's doing that in John 17. I think mm. he's sending them into the world um, just as Christ was sent into the world. He's sending his disciples into the world and, and we don't want to be of the world. We don't want to love the things the world loves necessarily, but we're in the world for a reason and we're in that world and this world to be sent into this world with the gospel message. Mm. Um, and as we're engaging the world, not isolating ourselves from the world, but engaging the world, we wanted those good works that um, God is working in us and, and giving us the environments and the opportunities to perform. We're doing that, 
you know, for, for the glory of God. Right. So Ephesians 2, 8, 9 talks about being saved by faith. It's by grace. It's a gift. It's not by works. Um, so that we could do good works mm -hmm. for the glory of the Father. Um, so as we're thinking about God working in us and working through us and us going out into the world as being sent into the world with the gospel message, um, doing good works of love and hospitality and, and, and helping people with the resources God's given us, um, it's all it's all ultimately for God's glory. It's yeah. not for our glory. It's not so uh, we can fit in better at Bethany Community Church or for my care group to think, hey, I'm doing really well. Um, this is really this this is for God's glory. And as we are living out the gospel, God is glorified in our life as He's changing our hearts and changing our desires and and changing our worship. Hmm. Yeah, well, that's really good, Brian. Really great uh, exhortations there. Um, and it. You know, when it comes to doing ministry like this, we, we do want this to be, you know, I am just so in love with Christ and so overwhelmed by the gospel that this would just flow out. And I, we joked how you're a hand gesture guy, you know, and, uh, but I think some of those gestures you're doing have just kind of, it's, it's from God through me and out. You know, it's a very, very appropriate way to kind of represent that, that it, I'm just so enraptured uh, with who Jesus Christ is that I, I just can't help but open my home and invite people in. Yeah, yeah. And it's not that we're necessarily just in love with the gospel facts or the, the doctrine mm. of the gospel. We're in love with Christ and we're in love with Jesus. Christ because he loved us first. Yeah. Right? So yeah. his love enables our love and his love enables us to love others yeah. and not isolate yeah. ourselves and, and just be waiting in this life until we get to heaven, until we can be with Christ face to face forever. We're here for a reason and, mm -hmm. and we're sent into this yeah. world. The love of Christ compels us, the scripture says. It constrains us. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's great. Um, just some practical suggestions. I'm even reaching back to Daniel's sermon uh, from 3 John on hospitality. Um, he mentioned some of the practical suggestions. It, it's dying to self. It's planning ahead. Uh, taking advantage of Sundays, you know, maybe for Sunday lunch. Um, learning how to, how to have a conversation. Some people might be a little more introverted and just learning, okay, how do I, what kind of questions can I ask? How can I be uh, other-centered in my conversations? Uh, he mentioned about being politely aggressive, which I thought was a good way of saying that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, be taking the initiative, be going forward with this. Um, not feel like your home has to be perfect. Um, not saying that our home shouldn't be safe, and, and, uh, but you don't want to be a distraction when people come over. Um, but also realizing, hey, if I don't get a dust rag on every tabletop in my house, it's, it's going to be okay. Um, you know, committing to a, a care group is one thing he mentioned too. Um, just again, we're hoping that our, our care groups are coming together to do this as a, as a group, to, to pray for one another, support one another, share ideas. Uh, if you're not in a care group, we want to make sure people are, are very aware that you can still participate in this and to talk to you or I if there's a, a way we can support a family that's not in a care group to, to, to uh, take a part of the hospitality initiative. Um, we want people to set goals for this. We're, we're setting a, a kind of a goal of sometime in May for a lot of our families that are and individuals in our church that are considering this. Um, but we wanted to think beyond that. This would be something that hopefully some of uh, um, the hospitality initiative um, flyers that we've that many people have received, um, uh, some banners or signs that we'll have up. Uh, that, that'll be a, a periodic thing people see in our church, not just during this season. Um, but throughout the rest of 2015 and on, that these items would be something people would become familiar with, to be reminded, to continue to trust the Lord, um, to have uh, unbelievers in our homes. Um, just some other logistical things. Um, our church website, bethanycommunitychurch.org slash the hospitality initiative will have more information on this. The world's longest URL <laughs> that we could ever create, we have. That's why it's on the flyer, so you don't so, have to remember it. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Um, so that, that our website will have a, a ministry page devoted to this initiative. People can get to it right from our homepage. If you just scroll over some of those um, parts of our website on the homepage, you'll see the hospitality initiative there. You can get right to it. Um, we mentioned care groups. Also, uh, we're developing a hashtag that is hashtag thankful. And for those maybe who aren't familiar with social media, um, hashtags are and with a word after that or a phrase after that are a way um, for people to become uh, aware of something that's trending, something that people are doing. So if I were to say, um, having some neighbors over tonight, uh, looking forward to it on my Facebook or Twitter feed, I'd put hashtag thankful. Um, if you were to have a neighbor over, you could say, hey, looking forward to having the Wilsons over tonight, hashtag thankful. And if I click on that hashtag, 
I would, it would come up, who are all the people that are using that hashtag thankful on the social media site that I'm on? So I'd see that you're using it. I'd see the others in our church. So it's a kind of a way for, for us to kind of as a church, just be aware, be praying for it. Also, if your neighbor saw the hashtag thankful on your Twitter feed, they wouldn't be like freaked out by that if it said, like, for example, a hashtag was having my unbelieving friends over for dinner. That might be a little awkward for your neighbor to see. That would be. Um, <laughs> but uh, this way, hey, your neighbors would know that you're thankful for them. Um, we would know that you're thankful for them, that you're thankful for the gospel, mm -hmm. and you're thankful for the opportunity to have these people in your home uh, yeah. for gospel proclamation. Yeah, I think thankful gets at our kind of our heart attitude as we engage yeah. in this ministry. So joyful is another one, uh, but thankful is is also very true. We're thankful for the gospel, thankful for our friends, thankful for the opportunity to share our homes with with uh, with our friends this evening. So yeah, it fits. Yeah. So as we uh, kind of end this third video here, we are kind of giving this last encouragement towards participating in the hospitality initiative. So we hope people will consider that um, in the context of their care group, or if they're not, they would still consider doing that. Um, they would consider uh, taking advantage of some of the resources on our website, and then also that, that hashtag thankful as a way to kind of show uh, people um, in our church, as well as um, friends that are inviting over, how thankful we all are for the gospel and for a chance to engage with others ab about it. So, any last words as we close? No, just the, the phrase rhythm of life keeps coming to my mind as we think mm. through this. And okay. um, This isn't an initiative that has a start and an end date. It's something that we hope just lives on in the culture of our church and becomes a rhythm of our individual lives and the, the rhythm of the lives of our, of our fellow church members. Yeah, great. Great. Well, we hope uh, you've enjoyed these videos, and if you're in a care group, there should be some questions available for you all to discuss now. Uh, if you're not in a care group, we'd love to get those questions to you so you can discuss that with your spouse or your roommates, uh, wherever your situation may be. But we're looking forward to see what the Lord does through the Hospitality Initiative, not only in the next few weeks, but in the life of our church uh, as we move forward together uh, to glorify God as we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and prepare His people to worship Him forever. Have a great day. <music>